Here you're going to have the unique opportunity to see nitrogen deficiency and toxicity in a cannabis plant. There's a trial that was conducted where a plant was um, fed too much nitrogen, that's where you see the toxicity, and then underfed nitrogen, and that's where you'll see the deficiency. However, the image here, this is the goal of what we're trying to achieve here. So nitrogen, we'll just start with the basics. Why do plants need it? What, what do they use it for? Well, it's a mobile nutrient, and that's important when we look at where we start to look at where on the plant, where we might be seeing toxicity or deficiency symptoms. It's necessary for amino acids, nucleic acids, chlorophyll, coenzymes, a whole bunch of other things associated with the components of plant production. Nitrogen gives the plants that lush green color while promoting succulent growth and hastens maturity. So that's kind of giving that plant that nice, what we determined as growers, as a healthy green color. Deficient plants exhibit what we call chlorosis, which is loss of normal green color or yellowing of the leaves. Excessive nitrogen can cause delayed maturity, higher disease and kind of issues, lower tolerance for environmental stresses, reduced carbon, uh, carbohydrate reserves, poor root development, and difficulty to clone uh, is another uh, negative effect of overfeeding nitrogen, not to mention costs. So this is the trial that was conducted. This is kind of the setup here. Uh, the cultivar that was used is wife. It's a high in uh, CBD. Uh, plant age is about 80 days old. It was grown in a greenhouse to help maintain consistent conditions. Control plants were fed a balanced fertilizer. And the test plant was either fed a deficient amount of nitrogen or a toxic, not quite super toxic to kill the plant, but a bloated appearance as you're gonna see with the nitrogen that was over applied to those plants. So starting with the deficient plants. So it's important when we see leaves that are yellowing, we notice where they're located. And over here in kind of those uh, red circle, we see that lower portion of the leaf, of the leaves showing that yellowing color. The lack of robust growth, a thin overall appearance to the plant, poor green color even throughout the plant, but especially in those lower leaves in slow growth. So if you're looking at just this image, it's very hard to do that comparison. So let's take a look at this plant compared to what be a normal plant. We can see that control plant uh, over on this side here. Uh, that's how a plant should look if it was fed a balanced fertilizer. Now you can really see that lack of vigor in that test plant. Uh, test plants also has that really yellowing leaves of the, uh, on the older portions of the plant or that lower portion of the plant. So again, this really now shows a nitrogen deficient plant when you compare it to a normal plant of the same age. Now look, to look for specifically, as I said, those yellowing of the leaves. Uh, notice how the upper leaves here has a normal green color uh, and the older leaves are yellowing. This is a plant that's exhibiting a kind of a more advanced uh, form of nitrogen deficiency. And we can see that here, that the green color is being pushed to that newer growth. Because nitrogen is a mobile nutrient, it's moving from the older and being translocated through the plant to the newer growth that we see here. Now, if you're growing tomatoes, they kind of do the same thing. Yelling of those older leaves, same symptoms as cannabis. This was an extreme case where only the very top of the leaves of the plant have much green color to them at all. And the plant has a very spindly look to it in general as well. Seedlings can have early symptoms of low nitrogen. We can see that here. There's yelling of those older leaves and that greening of the upper leaves here. This problem should be corrected now to avoid stress during uh, the transplant. In field conditions, this can be more common um, if after prolonged heavy rains, particularly in sandy soil, that will flush out a lot of that nitrogen. Here we see a hemp field here. Uh, the bud regions, the upper portion is green, but those lower regions, definitely that yellowy coloration. Um, if noticed only near harvest time, near the end of the season, not necessarily a bad thing because you want that last bit of nitrogen to push through the plant, uh, and it's a sign that you did not overfeed those plants with nitrogen. Now, how to correct a problem? Well, a whole host of fertilizers are out there. I've just kind of mentioned a couple here. With the advantage of just about all nitrogen fertilizers is they're very quick acting. So typically, once added, watered into the root zone, uh, you should see a plant change in as little as three days. So all the rates suggested here are for about a two by two growing area. Uh, we have blo blood meal, urea, calcium nitrate, and ammonium sulfate are the most common ones. Blood meal, one tablespoon uh, per area incorporated into the soil and watered in is key. It's organic. Uh, the downfall is it is kind of costly, but in three days you'll see the plants green up if you did have a nitrogen deficiency. 
urea, uh, three quarters of a teaspoon per gallon of water. It's very potent. This is 46% nitrogen compared to blood meal. That's only 12. That's a very concentrated source. It can volatize or you can lose a lot of that nitrogen to the air if not incorporated into the soil. And keep in mind, if you are making soil applications of urea, the soil should be warm, about 50 degrees Fahrenheit plus or 10 degrees Celsius or greater. Calcium nitrate is 15.5% uh, nitrogen, one tablespoon per gallon of water, um, highly water soluble, but it can increase the soil pH if used at high rates or over an extended period of time. So just be mindful of that. And lastly, I have ammonium sulfate here, 21% nitrogen, half a tablespoon per gallon of water, reduces leaching and volatilization, but it can acidify the soil. So this is how to correct a deficiency. But what does a toxicity symptoms look? What happens if you over apply your calculations here? Well, looking at the over applications, uh, this is what a toxic um, level of nitrogen can look like. You have excessive growth, a very dark green color to the leaves and brittle stems. Plants can also be very difficult to clone. So again, here we see that very dark lush green growth. Now, how does that look compared to the control plant, that same control plant from before? You can now see that comparison, how much darker that green color is. There's a green door and a white wall in the background kind of to kind of color balance things a little bit, but we can definitely see that darker green color with this excessive nitrogen. Uh, a very dense canopy as well, uh, and that just excessive um, growth there. Now, the toxicity, how to correct that? Well, simply how to correct it is to know what fertilizers you're adding and how much to add. And as growers, not to over add, or if it says a tablespoon, don't do one, and then a little bit more. You want to calculate what you're adding uh, and learn what the normal plant and color of, looks like so that you know if you're over adding or under adding. As I mentioned before, nitrogen is very quick acting, which is great because if you do have a deficiency, you can easily correct that. So hopefully this helps you kind of understand the nitrogen problems uh, on the toxicity or on the um, deficiency end. And you can check out other videos on this channel to help you understand potential deficiencies in your plants.